So this is the BMW 4 Series and initially when I seen the pictures of this I wasn't very impressed because the kidney grill had become enormous but now they've put a license plate on this one it doesn't look half as big. Amongst the Flavonites and one particular one who's called Stuart said that this is called the lung grill because now it's so big it looks like a pair of lungs on the front of the car rather than kidneys and he's not wrong in fairness to him. Hope you're feeling well Stuart. The rest of the car though is brilliant. It's actually really good. It's expensive. It's got a lot of options on it, but we're going to have a look at all of those sort of things. So hit the subscribe button and let's get on with this review. So side profile, it actually has a really handsome side profile, I think. It's filthy, but that's because I've been driving, I'm gonna drive it more today. But it looks good, I think, it looks good. The color is actually an optional extra. I think it's about 1900 euro, something like that. There is rather a lot, rather a lot. Actually, let's, let's stop messing around. There's over 11,000 euros worth of options on this particular car. Just bear that in mind when I start talking about the price. There's a lot of options on this car. Uh, I'll try and go through the options as I see them along the way. But if I come around the back, it's got a normal BMW rear end. Uh, it's got an electric tailgate. It's an option. It's part of the comfort pack. Uh, but it actually reveals quite a big boot. It does quite go back a fair bit. And it actually has got shopping bag hooks in the back here as well. And you can lower the seats from in here. You can push them forward at the back. So you can get more of a loader. But they don't actually drop, you can see on their own, I'd have to go around to the side of the car and actually open up the back. But we'll open them up because we're going to be using that in a minute. Uh, electric tailgate also allows you to lock the car from one button. Uh, side is lovely. I like that this is a single window, so it gives a good idea, but this does not open or anything. This doesn't do anything. This window opens, of course. The rotors inside are colored. Again, another option. The front door, the controversial front, the controversial big grill. You can see it for yourself now. It's got a little camera in the middle of it. The grill is actually this whole thing here all around, which is why Stuart called it a lung grill. But when the license plate's on, it's not quite as bad, right? I don't think so. I think it's actually okay. I like the front with the grill on it. And I like the front with that license plate. But without a license plate, mmm, it's a bit much. So that is basically the exterior. Now you might do is just have a look under the bonnet for a second because I want to show you something else under there. We don't normally poke about too much under the bonnets. But this, so what I want to show you was this actually still has the gas struts on it. Like Volkswagen and all the rest of them, they've gotten rid of these gas struts because they're too expensive. But you can also see you've got BMW twin power turbo written on it. It's actually a two liter diesel unit. You can see how much space there is left on both sides, heat shields. All down there, very complicated engine. And under here, then you got these struts to add pressure, keep it all connected. So it is a serious machine. Lovely engine, nice engine bay. I like the colored cables. I know that sounds really inane, but I like colored cables. What can I say? Closes nicely too. Right, let's have a gander on the inside. So interior. As always with little coupes, they're quite hard to get in and out of. They always are though. Not a criticism necessarily of BMW. Because the big door and then the small sort of cabinet go in. And this steering wheel is not electric. But the seat is electric. So the steering wheel doesn't get out of your way when you're getting in. It just stays where it is. That said, it's good steering wheel. Also that said, it's an optional steering wheel. It's part of a comfort pack. <laughs> All the good stuff in the car that I really kind of like are mostly optional extras. Including the electric seats which have electric memory on them, which means you're able to let someone in the back and it will slowly, see it there's very slow, but it'll get out of the way of the person moving into the back seat. But the good part about that is that when you push the top back, half back, it remembers where it was, so it goes back. That is also an optional extra in the comfort pack. So yeah, this optional stuff is quite catastrophic on the price of it, but Nonetheless, moving along here for a second, uh, I have a le fully electronic dashboard. You can see there are 212 kilometers left. I have that much diesel left out of it. Um, 
Uh, it doesn't tell me there. I've done 665 kilometers, but it didn't tell me what the fuel efficiency of that 665 has been. We should see if we can find that. Service due in 24,000 kilometers. That's not unusual. No, not telling me much there. I'm looking for it. Hmm. Oh, there we are, 6.2 litres per 100 kilometres is what the car is reporting to me. Uh, it feels better, more efficient than that. Um, moving across here, I have an infotainment system, which is actually pretty good. The uh, BMW kind of iDrive, as it was called, uh, system isn't as bad as it used to be, but it's still pretty complicated to get in and out of stuff. But generally speaking, everything is on the screen that you want to see. This would be where your phone is. I don't have that. This would be where your media or radio is. But you can see by... The intuitiveness is I want to change the channel, so I click on this, and that brings me into mobile devices. When I just I just want radio, <laughs> you know. So you go into media, and then you go into media again, and then you realise you can change where it's coming from. So you can go to radio from there, right? So that's where the wheel comes in. But you can see there's too many clicks, BMW. It's just too many. If I want to go, that's looking seeking my my phone for Bluetooth. I don't want a phone. What if I just want radio? Where's that on that screen? That's an easy one. From down below. You can uh, control it with this thing. There's a wheel here and some buttons around the outside of it. That is the gear stick. Then you have all your, your cameras down here. So I can go into camera here and see a uh, camera system. Never rely solely on the camera system, but you can change uh, the camera picture. No. Uh, there's a top down yoke that comes up as well. It's gone now. Another one bites the dust. Ah, there we are. There's the top down one. So. You have this top down one that shows you how wide your doors are open. That door is open, which is why it's got that. And it shows you the rear view as well. So that, that's available here during the parking system. Reversing assistant is here as well, camera picture. You can do all kinds of stuff that's there. Uh, and that's all available on it. That's all standard. Then coming down here, I have these ones. Adaptive Eco Pro Comfort Sport as my controls, which are okay. They're all right. That all works. And being honest with you, the back seats work too. The kids had no problem getting in there. They're not crushed. There is plenty of room in this back seat. Uh, for, for passengers uh, the car tells you about the doors being open and stuff open back there and the seat gets out of the way in a reasonable space so the back is is okay I, I would say but and there's nothing missing off an 86,000 euro car but the cabin is a bit dark in here at times it does feel not claustrophobic but it does feel kind of dank it feels dark as a dark headliner not big windows which are all okay but that's what you kind of expect in a GT as well right we're going to go for a little drive. So strap in, bitches. Let's do this. Yeah, the seatbelt's going to meet you. This is actually winter solstice today. It's the shortest day of the year, which is why it's so bleeding dark the whole time. Oh, it's very hard to deal with this time of the year. It really is. Mental health-wise, it's pretty hard. I'm struggling a little bit now because it's very hard to get a bit of vitamin D in. Uh, and it's very hard to um, wake up in the morning and things because it's... It's dark. It's dark when you wake up. It's dark when you go to bed. So it'll be very hard on people. So a bit of sympathy for people this time of year won't go straight. So we're back in the Mecca that is Port Leash. Or as Google calls it, Port Leowise. Uh, same as uh, uh, the Satnav, I mean. So you can see this is probably one of the nicest, just a lovely car to waft about in, in a slow sense. So just driving around a town is quite nice. Uh, the gearbox isn't too jerky, it doesn't do too much with this banging around the place and changing gears consistently, you don't feel it anyway so much. It's quite a smooth gearbox. So included on my press cars is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So they're already there, but I actually find the BMW system is pretty good and brings you where you want to go, the sat-nav and the, uh, the Bluetooth system. Now it ha does have wireless car, that's here, hear that beep, beep, that thing? That's reminding you that there's a stop sign in front and you should stop. Actually flashed up on the screen. Just in case you're a moron and you don't know how to drive, BMW's here to save the day. Come on, will you? Two lads washing the path over there. I could have said, would you wash my car? But I said I've heard that about 10 times today. Now, as a place to sit, it's actually quite nice in here. It is a lovely cabin. It does do nice things as well. You can use voice control. Set the cabin temperature to 20 degrees. What should I set the temperature to? 20 degrees. All right. 
I set the temperature in the driver's area on 20 degrees Celsius. Now, the first time I asked the car to do that, it set the passenger side at 20 degrees. It didn't bother me at all when there's no one over there. There's no seatbelts, no nothing. I don't know why it has to set the two things differently. You know, why can't the passenger say, and I said cabin temperature, so I want the entire cabin to be 20 degrees. I'm a bit weird with the, with the temperature thing. If there's nobody in the car, I want the two temperature controls to be the same. I don't want to have any variance. I don't want that side of the cabin to be one degree cooler than this side. I want the whole thing to be the same temperature. Now, if there's someone in the car, I don't really care if they want to have their own temperature, that's fine. But when they get out, that'll go straight back to whatever I set it to. So just a little bit like that. Now, one good thing I will say about BMW is they've moved the screen down the dashboard, but they haven't moved the vents down so low that it's blowing air on my knee, which is what's happening currently in modern interior design. As everything shifts its way down, they seem to be putting little vents down here in the middle where you, you get your knees all cold, but it's not in this one. This one, the, the uh, vents are just up the right uh, area. So we also have um, settings like we do, so we have Eco Pro, which turns the car into a big economical monster. It does some sort of witchcraft and makes the car more economical to drive. I think it just flattens your throttle control and it probably doesn't do a whole lot. It shifts away, the air conditioner I know goes off. Uh, so if you have air con turned on, that disappears off into the wild blue yonder. So comfort then just turns everything back. You can feel the power difference. Throttle response is quicker in comfort mode. It turns on all of the air conditioning systems. It makes the whole car feel nice and, uh, and, nice and comfortable, I suppose. Shouldn't have any difference really in the suspension system. And then you go to sport mode. Sport mode does do something a little bit more unusual, I have to say. Sport mode turns on some kind of actuator, some kind of noise maker in the car, which is okay. Noise makers are okay. I can live with noise makers. Not a big deal. Uh, that's flashing lights to me there. Thanks very much. Um, noise makers are okay, but this one does sound distinctly electronic. That, uh, that's a bit like, mm, why are you doing that? Like, why is it, why is it so electronic? Um, so you can hear it. When it, when it. You can't hear it now. So I'm in sport mode now. I don't know why there's no noise now, but I'm in sport, I'm in sport mode now. I'll get to that in a minute. Put your foot down. So you can hear it there, but when I go back to comfort, barely any noise with diesel but it sounds a little bit like it's out of sync so in the background i can hear the bmw diesel engine do its job but then i can hear the sound of like it's almost a fake noise from the speaker area it's it's kind of weird you'd have to sit here and listen to my my mics won't pick that up won't pick that little sort of distortion thing up uh, it will be a, a different thing entirely I think BMW have made a wonderful car. I think the problem is right now that the whole thing is starting to unravel. The BMW, diesels, petrol, straight diesels, turbo diesels, I think it's starting to unravel. As, as young people within the car companies don't understand what they're supposed to do next, as the general public are very confused about diesel, petrol, mild hybrid, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, electric, full electric BEV all these terms they're very difficult to understand for a lot of people a lot of ordinary people at home haven't got a clue what most of that stuff means and what it means to them in the future this is just a BMW 2 liter diesel engine and it's a beautifully responsive engine it's a super engine if this was five years ago everybody in the whole world would buy this engine and be very very happy with it but it's not it's five years later and whether this kind of car has a decent future or not is entirely up to the buyers out there this is as responsible as BMW gets when it comes to diesel. Of course, it's low CO2. We already encourage low CO2. We already tax the car based upon its CO2 emissions. Shouldn't be a problem, really, but it is a problem. So you can hear that sort of fake noise, right? If I back off and floor it again. It's very fake, though. Now, the throttle response is not fake. The throttle response is good. It feels fast. It feels responsive. When I touch that accelerator, it is really giving me good power, but really that engine is still a really good engine. It just feels right now a little bit outdated because there's no electronic component to it. There's nothing else driving the car. So this feels like a good, old fashioned, honest, turbo diesel engine car. And I actually love it. I do, as much of a fan of electrics as I am, I actually love the straight dieselness of this. BMW have made a cracking car here. I really like this. I'm normally not big into coupes. I have kids and stuff, so I'm not really into the coupe effort. But this is actually a really top-notch car. 
I've enjoyed every moment driving it for whatever 650 odd kilometers that I've driven it. It's been incredibly fuel efficient and I'll actually miss it when it goes back. I'm not sure how many of these we're gonna see on the road, but you know, it's a cracking machine. It looks well with the license plate in the front of Kidney Grill, this looks so big uh, and I really like it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've hit the subscribe button at this point. I'm back with the Sunday service. This is the su winter solstice day, so I'll be back with the Sunday service as soon as I possibly can after Christmas. Uh, Christmas is this Friday, so this is this is Monday. I'm gonna say Monday. Um, I've lost track of this, <laughs> the lockdown is killing me. We don't know where we are with lockdown, but I'm gonna try and create a car meetup if lockdown allows. If we get to that point where we can actually do a lockdown, I'm gonna create a car meetup uh, and we'll all get together again for another little chin wag in real life though this time, which would be very nice, I think. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm gonna have a speed bump here. Oh. Uh, there's a BMW 640, there's a great car. That's a good car, that car. Mm, I like them. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and hopefully you will have a happy and safe Christmas and into the new year you will get everything that you ever desired with any look into the future. Uh, thank you for, for watching all the videos throughout the year. This is not the last video of the year. I don't know what sequence I'm going to be doing these videos in, but uh, thank you all for watching. And until the next time, I will see you on the far side.